Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So in the previous one we spoke about SAS cages and how um, you know SAS hard drives are very viable option when you're talking with regards to um, uh, storage expandability. However, we haven't really talked about uh, how you can adapt one. So for example, take this one. This is a, a SAS cage taken from a Lenovo Think server. Uh, I, I, I think it's a TS140 or 160 or something like that. I, you know, don't quote me on it, but they're pretty cheap on eBay. I think the cage with the dri with the drive caddies, I ended up buying for like $25 off of, uh, off of an auction. But so this one, uh, in particular came with, you know, the power cable and, you know, honestly, uh, when you plug it in. Uh, you know, this is already pre uh, pre uh, stripped by the way, because I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys how to hook it up to a power supply. So just make sure that you select the victim because you know it, it does include you basically stripping two black wires, which is you know your ground, red, which is your five volt, and a 12, which is your 12 volt. Um, we'll come back to that in a second, but whenever you end up buying a cage with a proprietary um you know connector even though it's cheaper it's not the end of the world and this is exactly what we're gonna do so whenever i had this in um in a working compatible tower i ended up finding out that the red you know actually this is following the uh the pc standard your red is your 5 volt your black is your ground or your common and your your yellow one is your 12 volt so um you know it wasn't that difficult for me to say, oh, you know what? I can just adapt it. Now, the power supply in my main rig is a uh, EVGA uh, 1200 or sorry, 1300 G2. So there's no way that I'm going to, you know, m you know, find a way to uh, mess this swap, uh, mess this one up in particular, because it was a very expensive power supply when I bought it. And uh, I'm not going to go around messing it with up, uh, messing it up, especially, you know, in in today times when you know like everything's freaking expensive uh but i do have this antic earth watts which uh is gonna go into my you know uh you know another victim which is the uh i star usa 200 something full steel case and that's gonna be for um storage testing purposes and formatting hard disks and data recovery and all that stuff so once you have your victim power supply uh find an unused rail uh usually the one with the uh disket uh connector is your best bet but because i need the two molex connectors i went and i picked the sata one uh you know go ahead and isolate the orange wire because you don't really need 3.3 volts in uh in uh in sas you only need 5 12 and ground once you um isolate your wires then it's literally just um a game of match you know you connect the yellow to the yellow the black to the black and the red to the red and you know you have a functional sas cage so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh solder these real quickly and i'll come back to you um once that's done all right Okay, so just before we begin, there's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, whenever you're pairing up your wires, uh, what I have personally done is the 5 volt and the common that's coming off just the 5, five volt real quick, as you can see over here, and the common and the 12 volt, I've separated them into two pairs. So the red and half of the black and then the other half of the black and the 12 is exactly what I'm going to do over here with this. Uh, this is going to be the, the yellow and, and the uh, the half black on the side of yellow and then the red and the black on the and the half black on the side of red and that way it can sort of uh, balance the electrical load between them. Uh, like, I, like I did mention previously in the video, you don't really need uh, super amazing soldering skills to uh, make this happen. It's just one of the things that it's not really user friendly to do. And if you're not confident in doing it, that's absolutely okay. If you have somebody, if you have a friend or a relative who's a little more electrically inclined, you can always ask them to do it for you. So now that that's said, make sure that you, uh, you know, clean your tip a little better than I do, or at least make sure that you take care of it better than I do. Have uh, flux 
for oops sorry this is um yeah no this is flux lead free flux and uh your tin right so again i'm just gonna come back real quick after i solder this and i'm gonna show you guys what i'm talking about okay so in a perfect world this is how soldering the cables should look like as you can see it is very even everything is covered and there is very good contact between obviously you're gonna have to clean it up a little bit with a toothbrush because of all that gunk but you know overall this is as best as it, as it can get and you know for obvious reasons uh namely because this was the last cable and the only one that turned out perfect i'm not really gonna show you the other ones okay now that we're done and we have covered everything in an ungodly amount of electrical tape something which honestly could have been solved with a little bit of shrink tubing we are ready to put everything together connect our little cable to the cage and test it for power and we're gonna continue on to uh, connecting everything up with the controller and setting it up in windows okay now we are several hours into the video of headache finding compatible parts and you know uh finding a way to uh, make myself calm down a little bit we are finally ready to uh hook up the two cages to a motherboard and i didn't really have a hpa per se so i'm just gonna use a one of my older controllers which is a p840 uh yeah p840 and we're gonna hook up the cages individually and uh another thing because they didn't really find any of sas drives readily available that i can uh put into uh put into the cages at each time i have two western digital i believe they're go no just western digital enterprise storage which are with hp firmware but that's really regardless and we're going to test out cage number one, cage number two, and then both cages together. Uh, just so that, uh, you know, you guys can see everything is working. Uh, little uh, sidetrack. These drives are SATA. As a rule of thumb, SAS can control SATA and SAS, but SATA controllers cannot control SAS drives. Uh, keep that in mind whenever you guys are going to be moving forward with that. You can't just plug and play. There is a little bit of involvement uh, necessary. So now that that's, uh, now that I'm situated a little better and you actually, I, you know, have use of both of my hands, you know, thank you, Amazon tripod. Let's, uh, let's hook up a little bit more things. And uh, as soon as I have output on my monitor over there, I'm going to take the tripod in my hand and then we're going to go um, and then we're going to go uh, work it off together. So this is done. This is done. This is the recess with no problem. This is so much difficult, uh, so much more difficult outside of a proper test bench. But uh, as soon as I get you know, enough money to buy a, a proper test bench, uh, open bench, then I am going to uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, I need a mouse and keyboard. I'll be right back. Okay, now that we are about three hours into this video that was only supposed to be 20 minutes, my dream of shotgunning four or five videos tonight is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're gonna do a quick recap of what we've done so far and then what we're gonna do uh, in the future. By the way, Grosh, please call me. I've been looking for a sponsor. Uh, so far, we have quote unquote, purchased two SAS cages, one proprietary and one pretty much ATX standard because of the Molex connectors. We have, uh, hotwired the proprietary directly to our power supply for uh connectivity uh for power we have connected one of our uh sas controllers uh which this can be uh identified directly as a rate controller or sorry um it can be running in rate controller firmware or as it or pass-through or whatever it's called uh mode 
and the next step what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hopefully boot into Windows and uh, if everything goes according to plan we are going to plug in the second SAS cage and if everything is continuing to not catch fire we're gonna plug both hard drives one into each cage and we're going to identify them in uh, in Windows and make sure that we can see them and write some data to them okay so just a quick update because this is probably gonna take another hour or maybe a little more depending on how driver installation um, develops it turns out that we actually need to install Windows because the uh, boot partition on the NGFF SSD ended up uh, corrupting itself but you know what no big deal we're gonna take care of that in uh, very very quickly uh, just as another small preface we are using a HP controller so we are gonna be uh, what I am going to do your mileage may vary is uh, I'm going to install uh, Hewlett Packard's uh, smart storage administration utility and that's how I'm going to be controlling the uh, the, the settings on the controller from inside Windows so just uh, something to note is that whenever you're going to be installing one of those uh, whether it's going to be an HBA or a SAS controller or whatever type of an add-on card uh, whether it's going to be on a fresh install or something that you've already been running for weeks months years whatever make sure that you have your chipset drivers installed and properly up to date otherwise it's going to have uh, problems recognizing and, and interacting with the card and especially when it comes to installing additional proprietary drivers and on a separate note thank you past me i found my uh sas drives that i originally wanted to use for this video uh so i'm going to attach them to two caddies of the hp and two caddies of the lenovo and we're gonna come back in a couple of minutes after i charge my camera and we're officially back again so sorry about the delay and the uh, increasing amount of cables that at some point should become worrisome what i ended up doing is i tested this off camera just to make sure that it doesn't catch fire and cause a false com uh, fail compilation everything is good uh i managed to uh, do a little bit of cable management and i went and i got the data cable so that being said i have plugged in two of the sas Cable, uh, hard drives into the Lenovo cage and two of the SAS hard drives into the HP cage and what we're gonna do right now is uh, bear with me for a second here okay that's it perfect it's full view and we're going to open HP smart storage administrator and if everything goes according to plan it will view my controller okay let's take a look here so this is the interface of the controller as you can see it says no configurable hard uh, physical drives all right so now that being said let us go ahead and quickly uh put push the flush so that we have power that's one two and as you can see i believe you can see it we have leds that's on the lenovo cage now three. Oh, there it is and oh, come on this one's always a little bit of a four and that also just spun up so if everything goes according to plan i am going to hit refresh and it's going to see the four hard drives okay oh hey look at that no more warning message let's go back to the controller oh two unassigned drives let's go into the configure page let's go to create an array okay so why does it only see two okay so it sees only two let's uh let's refresh it again because it should be seeing all four of them 
Okay, let's take a look. Uh, okay, it only keeps seeing two. That's interesting. All right, uh, let me do a little bit of troubleshooting and I'll get back to you. And we're back. So um, I don't know why, but sometimes Windows doesn't like to play nice. So as you can see, now we have our four unassigned drives. All I had to do was just reboot the system and they showed up. As you can see, uh, I still have the two drives over here. They're nice and spinning. And two other drives over here. They are also nice and spinning. So what we're gonna do right now is go, we're going to go ahead and click configure and we're gonna create an array with all four drives. Come on, there we go. And then we're gonna click on create array. And because this is just, you know, for video purposes, there's not gonna be any important data stored into this. We are going to create a maximum array of 10.9. Caching is not really important for this and uh, Make sure if you're making a SATA array, okay uh, There's a there's a table on the um, Strip size for different raid levels make sure that you guys are following that and in my case what I'm because I want to do a raid zero so raid zero strip size And I think it was Tom's hardware forum uh, that really explains it. But I, if I, if I remember correctly, it was uh, for RAID zero for the highest performance. Okay, blah blah blah. Yeah, there you go. So 64K is the smallest size that you could select without, uh, without like losing any, adva uh, you know, not seeing any more uh, advantages. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, click on 64. We're going to create the logical array with 10.9 uh, terabytes. And as you can see, we have officially created the array with uh, across four drives, which is almost 11 terabytes. So several hours later and uh almost two tall boys of beer even though uh out of the box it doesn't look very visually appealing what you can do is you can have a quick browse because there's sas cages for different types of whether it's going to be a workstation or a server there's hp there's lenovo i believe dell has their own like proprietary cage but they also have their proprietary caddies um I believe theirs is a little more uh, universally fittable in the sense that um, they properly have like um, um, slots for, for screws and everything like that on the side of the cage, but don't quote me on that. Um, if you do end up finding a SAS cage that you find visually appealing, after you buy yourself a HBA or RAID controller, uh, for the love of God, please do not go from SFF8087 to a white SAS. I still don't know what the uh, proper terminology for white SAS is. Just buy straight 8087 cables because they're the cheapest. I believe they're like three or four dollars a pop. And, uh, you know, connect your, connect your cage and you should be good to go. And, uh, I believe... Uh, the price for like a 14 terabyte um, SAS drive is like 200 US dollars, which is around 200, 300 Canadian. That price per dollar is compared to SATA and the performance uh, gains that you gain uh, get compared to SATA is, uh, you know, just amazing. And uh, this is where I'm going to cut off the video because it has been way too long. I have pulled all of my hair and I'm ready to sleep. Have a good night, everyone.